Hello, welcome to lecture 14 of this course. This is an additional lecture and the contents of this lecture is not going to be part of your examination. But however, this uh, lecture is going to be very useful for students and viewers who want to understand continuous variable entanglement. Uh, in this lecture, I am going to develop the essential uh, basics or fundamentals that is needed to understand continuous variable entanglement. So let us begin. All of us have some idea about what is mean by continuous variable. In the original EPR experiment, position and momentum, position and momentum were the continuous variable and you know that the position say x can take value between minus infinity to plus infinity and momentum also say momentum p it can take value between minus infinity to plus infinity any value it can take so that's the reason position and momentum are called continuous variable now one extremely important uh, quantum system is the so-called continuous variable system are called one is the so-called photonic system and another one is the so-called phononic system uh, among photonic systems the so-called electromagnetic fields electromagnetic fields as you know is of immense importance electromagnetic fields and for phononic systems, uh, we have all those mechanical oscillators, mechanical oscillators. Why they are called photonic and phononic? Uh, because electromagnetic field, if you know that when an electromagnetic field is quantized, most of the electromagnetic field uh, or the microwave field or when you quantize mechanical oscillators, uh, they, they behave like uh, harmonic oscillator and most of the electromagnetic fields are called photons and the modes of mechanical oscillators who is vibrate, they are called phonons. And both these combined together are called bosonic systems, bosonic systems okay now all of you know that the hamiltonian for a harmonic oscillator is uh, given by for a sing one particular mode of oscillation harmonic oscillator hamiltonian would be h cross omega in terms of the so-called creation and annihilation operator would be a dagger a plus half a is the annihilation operator and a dagger is the creation operator a bosonic system can be treated as a collection of infinite number of modes, each mode oscillating like a harmonic oscillator. Then we can write the Hamiltonian for a collection of uh, n modes of a bosonic system for bosonic system. The Hamiltonian we can write as a collection of independent harmonic oscillator suppose the k -th mode is oscillating like harmonic oscillator so you'll have h cross omega k a k dagger a k plus half okay so this is the for a collection of harmonic oscillator now the hilbert space of this bosonic system for each such continuous variable system it comprises of n canonical bosonic system it can be represented by this hilbert space uh, in italicized h and it would be i can write it as a tensor product of e for the hilbert space for each of the mode so first mode is like in the hilbert space h1 the second mode is like in the hilbert space s2 and third mode in h3 and so on if there are total n number of modes are there then that's what you can write and in shorthand notation the tensor product i can write it as uh, by this symbol where k goes from 1 to n and i have hk here right and you see each 
एच के हियर बींग इनफाइनिट डायमेनशनल फॉक स्पेस एसोसिएटेड उथ ए सिंगल मोड इट्स मोड इन दिम्पल हारमनिक असिलेटर हेव इनफाइनिट नम्बर अफ एनार्जी लेवल्स यू नो इफ आई कन्सिडार वान सिंगल हारमनिक असिलेटर मोड देन इट्स एनार्जी लेवल्स आर बिकज इट्स ए हारमनिक असिलेटर इट्स एनार्जी लेवल्स आर इकुअलि स्पेस बट उ हेव इनफाइनिट अफ दिस लेडार्स अफ एनार्जी ओके लाइक दिस ओके Now, for the sake of convenience and simplicity, we'll take uh, in the rest of this lecture. We are going to take h cross is equal to one, and this also call is said to be that we are basically taking the so-called Nesserl units. So we'll consider h cross is equal to one, and in that case, the for the bosonic system, the Hamiltonian would be uh, I can write it like this: k go from one to n. And it would be h cross. I am taking it to be one. So I have omega k a k dagger a k plus half. Now for each mode, we can define dimensionless position and momentum quadrature operators. For each mode, for each mode, I can write the position quadrature q k. In terms of creation and annihilation operator is this a k a k dagger by root two. These are textbooks materials. You can get it in any quantum mechanics book. And momentum quadrature I can write is as p k is equal to a k minus a k dagger divided by i root two. All right. So let me say this is my equation number one. These are my equation number two. All right, and also you know the so-called commutation relation between creation and annihilation operator. For example, we know that a k a l dagger is equal to delta k l, where delta k l is the Kronecker delta. Uh, this basically means that commutation between a k and a k dagger would be equal to one because k is equal to l here, and creation and annihilation operator commutes with themselves, so this would be equal to zero. And for the creation, you will have a k dagger a l dagger that would be equal to zero. So using this. I can rewrite this equation to uh, basically not rewrite using uh, this commutation relation. This com this set of commutation relations, I can then then write uh, the commutation relation for this position and momentum quadrature. I can easily show that Q K commutation between Q K and P L is equal to. I delta K L, and it's very it's actually trivial to so please uh, do it yourself. It's simple. The quadrature operators Q K and P K, I can actually represent them by an operator say J, which is written in this column matrix form, where I have the elements as quadrature as Q one. P one, I arrange it in this form: Q one, P one, Q two, P two, up to Q n, P n. So as you can see, I have total two n number of elements would be there, n number of elements from the quadrature, uh, position quadrature, and n number of elements from momentum quadrature. I can write it, express it in a uh, row form also. That would be Q one, P one. Q two, P two, up to Q n, P n, and of course I have to take the transpose. Now using uh, this new notation, I can write the commutation relation between position and momentum quadrature in this form: J k, J l commutation relation between J k and J l. It will give me I omega k l. Let's say this is my equation number five. Here, in this equation five, 
omega kl omega kl are elements are elements of the 2n dimensional 2n dimensional symplectic matrix symplectic matrix before i decode this equation number 5 let us discuss about symplectic matrix which some of you may have come across for the first time so first of all let us discuss what we mean by symplectic matrix so m is a say there is a matrix m which is a symplectic matrix is a symplectic matrix and its dimension is say 2n by 2n uh, symplectic 2n by 2n matrix if this particular condition is satisfied m transpose omega m is equal to omega where omega is uh, this matrix which has uh, n n by n uh, zero matrix would be there I, i'm writing it in the block form and there will be i n by n dimensional this is identity matrix and here in this uh, here you will again have n by n identity matrix and the diagonals you'll have n by n okay uh, actually let me discuss it further some properties of the this uh, symplectic matrix what is the result of this you know form what it actually mean we can always express a symplectic matrix m in the in the block form let's say we can write it in the block form as a b c d now uh, this particular condition m t uh, m transpose omega m is equal to omega what it basically means it means m transpose will give you a transpose c transpose right this is what you will get here m omega you have n by n zero uh, n by n identity here this these are all block matrices i'm writing so this is what you will get and here m is equal to a b c d this has to be equal to zero n i n minus i n zero n in fact if you do the it's very straightforward if you do the algebra rather than i n you can just write i anyway you can put it like this also if you do the algebra uh, you should easily get it's very trivial it's a simple matrix operation you have to do this will give you these conditions a t a transpose into c is equal to c transpose a b transpose d is equal to d transpose b and you will get a transpose d minus c transpose b is equal to identity id okay so this is what you will get uh, this is the meaning of satisfying these particular conditions so if the matrix m is to be symplectic it has to satisfy this condition where omega should have this uh, peculiar form like this okay we'll come back to this condition again now uh, to give you a better understanding of symplectic matrix let me invoke some example from classical mechanics let us discuss the so-called Hamilton's canonical equation of motion in symplectic form. Then I think hopefully you will be able to relate uh, to this whole thing. Hamilton's canonical equation uh, of motion 
some of you may have studied in classical mechanics particularly in the classic book of goldstein it's there hamilton canonical equation motion in symplectic form let us discuss it first of all all of us know what are the you know you know phase space because you know phase space uh, is the domain where this hamilton's equation of motions are written and phase space is comprised of position and momentum and phase space is always even in the sense that corresponding to each position variable there is a momentum variable for example if i talk about two dimensional phase space if i talk about two dimensional phase space i have the quantities say x and px only right that's why it is called two dimension corresponding to one space dimension i have a momentum similarly if i talk about three dimensional uh, you know for three dimensional space i would have six dimensional phase space six dimensional phase space and then i have this column vector say x y z p x p y p z all right this is what i will have now for n dimensional for n dimensional phase space n dimensional phase space phase x uh, space actually uh, you are going to have two n dimensional phase space right for n dimensional space you are going to have two n dimensional phase space and here i can write uh, it in this form eta uh, i can write this whole thing as say q1 q2 up to qn and then p1 p2 up to pn then i have to take the transpose so all of you are aware of the so called hamilton's equation of motion for each of q and p for example for the hamilton's canonical equation of motion would be q dot z is equal to delta h of delta pz and you will have p dot z is equal to minus delta h of delta qz this all of you know so if i consider the hamiltonian now i am talking about the classical hamiltonian we are no longer discussing quantum mechanics here we are discussing classical mechanics uh, in fact hamiltonian mechanics it is hamiltonian is a function of q1 q2 qn p1 p2 pn and if it is so then i can write delta h of delta eta eta i have defined it like this i can write it as delta h of delta q1 and i'll have delta h of delta q2 like this i'll have up to delta h of delta qn then i have delta h of delta p1 delta h of delta p2 up to delta h of delta pn i think it's very easy then i have to just take the transpose here now invoking the hamilton's canonical equation of motion for each set of qz pz i can write delta h of delta eta is equal to delta h of delta q1 so you just see this equation uh, here right you will have minus p1 dot then you will have minus p2 dot like that you will have minus pn dot and then you will have q1 dot q2 dot up to q dot n then you take the transpose okay now you see this negative sign may be very annoying and to get rid of them let us define a 2n by 2n skew matrix or anti symmetric matrix omega we already we know about it 2n by uh, 2n matrix so you have here in the diagonal you are having zero matrix of dimension n by n in the off diagonal in the upper one you will have 
n by n identity matrix and here you will have minus i n by n and here you have zero matrix of dimension n by n for example just to consider one example suppose n is equal to one then you have omega would be a matrix of uh, two by two matrix that you will then you will have here zero one minus one zero okay and if it is and you see these are always uh, even dimensional so then next one would be for n is equal to 2 you'll have a 4 by 4 matrix in that case uh, what you are going to have is it would be 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 and you'll have here minus 1 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 i hope you get the idea and now let us apply this uh, omega to delta h of delta eta okay if i do that then what you will get delta h of delta eta i am having as minus p1 dot minus p2 dot like that up to minus pn dot then you are having q1 dot q2 dot right up to qn dot transpose and if you apply omega here you will easily get it's very trivial to show that you are going to get it as q1 dot q2 dot qn dot you see the order is now getting changed and then here you will have positive p1 dot p2 dot up to pn dot all right and you take the transpose so therefore this is going to give you eta dot okay so let me uh, quickly demonstrate it uh, for n is equal to this particular step let me demonstrate it for n is equal to say uh, a trivial example let me say n is equal to 2 for n is equal to 2 h is equal to it's a function of now you are having q1 q2 p1 p2 right and eta is equal to q1 q2 p1 p2 transpose and delta h of delta eta is equal to minus p1 dot minus p2 dot q1 dot q2 dot transpose and omega is your it's say n is equal to 2 so you will have 4 by 4 matrix 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 minus 1 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 this is what you will have and therefore omega delta h delta eta if you do the multiplication so 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 minus 1 0 0 0 0 minus 1 0 0 and delta h of delta 1 is this column matrix column vector p1 dot minus p2 dot q1 dot q2 dot now you just do the matrix multiplication and then you are going to get q1 dot q2 dot as you can see easily p1 dot p2 dot so therefore this guy is nothing but your eta dot so therefore we have this relation omega delta h delta eta is equal to eta dot these are hamilton's equation of motion in the matrix form now as you can see from here that the minus sign uh, for p dot is no more there q and p now become symmetric or in symplectic form and this equation is the these are the symplectic form of hamilton's hamilton's canonical equation of motion canonical equation of motion all right 
now let us say you want to go uh, from you wish to say go from all coordinates uh, qp to a new phase space uh, denoted by the coordinates capital q capital p capital q is the new position coordinate coordinate variable and capital p is the new momentum uh, variable and you go from then hamiltonian h to h test your hamilton's canonical equation of motion the form has to be remain preserved while while you do that and that's why it is called canonical transformation and in this case your capital q new coordinate is a function of the old coordinate and similarly capital p is a function of old coordinate q and p so therefore you see we go from basically in terms of our new language we go from the uh, eta we go from eta to some new uh, xi right defined by uh, the set of variables so equivalently we are going from the hamiltonian h to s test in the new sp uh, phase space now this uh, new phase space also has to obey this equation uh, just uh, just a few minutes back right this equation we got this is the form of equation we should have in the new uh, phase space as well and we want to make a connection between the new uh, phase space and the old phase space that means between xi and eta to do that first of all uh, let us see how this new variable uh, new position variable as well as the momentum variable varies with time with respect to all coordinate qp and if we do that it's very straightforward to see uh, get this equation qi dot i will get it uh, in this form and similarly pi dot i will get in this particular form and to analyze it for just for two dimension n is equal to two uh, only for two variables q1 q2 p1 p2 then i will be able to write this set of equation i, I can write q1 dot q2 dot p1 dot p2 dot uh, if you just look at it it's very straightforward because q1 is also a function of q1 is a q1 is a function of all coordinates q1 q2 p1 p2 similarly uh, for q uh, capital q2 is also a function for it's a function of q1 q2 p1 p2 and similar thing i can uh, write for even p1 and 2 p1 and p2 are also function of q1 q2 p1 p2 because of that i can get this four set of equations uh, for time variation for q1 q2 p1 p2 and all these things combined together i can write it in a matrix form this is the form i can write so this uh, will lead me to this compact equation xi dot would be equal to m eta dot where as i defined xi dot already i have defined right xi dot is defined like this this is the column vector if you just i'm writing it in row form but if you just take the transpose you will get it the column version of it so then i can have this xi dot is equal to m eta dot this is the connection between my new variable xi and the old variable uh, uh, eta right set of variables and m is the matrix that gives me the connection between the old variable and the new variable now if i just pick up any of the variable i variable xi i dot i can write this equation and here this m also i can write uh, in this uh, form in terms of xi and eta this also you can write it because xi1 may be q1 uh, you know xi1 is basically capital q1 capital q2 capital p1 uh, uh, capital p2 and so on in fact let me just be very clear xi1 would be your capital q1 capital p1 and xi2 would be 
capital Q2, capital P2, right? That's what we I mean by xi1 and xi2. So, right, in this way for n, if I talk about this is I'm writing for any n variable. This expression I have uh, here I have shown it for n is equal to 2 but this is valid for for any n right and in that case I'm writing a general uh, matrix for m and any element uh, m i j would be basically delta j a of delta eta j. Okay these, these things if you just keep in mind for further discussion and now you see m is a 4 by 4 matrix for n is equal to 2 and overall m is a capital m is a 2n by 2n matrix uh, for any n and we have this in the old coordinate old phase space eta dot is equal to omega delta is delta eta and in the new phase space eta and xi are related by this expression its time vari variation is uh, related by this expression and also eta dot we know eta dot we can just write it as omega delta is delta xi right uh, actually yeah so maybe uh, i hope i'm writing it correctly it should be delta actually it should be delta eta right delta eta because i am just putting it here eta dot okay now in the new phase space your hamiltonian is also a function of uh, capital q capital p and capital Q and capital P are functions of the old variable Q and P and this will help me to write this equation that is your delta H dash delta eta I uh, in eta I is the old variable right and in terms of the new variable delta H is a function of xi and therefore again xi is a function of eta I think it's very simple then this is what you will get and then in general i can write delta h dash of delta eta is equal to now you see this guy is the is basically the transpose of m i j right uh, therefore that's why i'm writing m transpose this so uh, now you had xi dot is equal to m omega in the new phase space i will have m omega delta h delta eta right here i have written it for all phase space but now my hamiltonian is getting changed to h test so therefore i'm writing here h test here right m omega delta h test delta eta and delta h of delta h test delta eta i'm from here i'm writing this part here and by the way we expect that uh, my xi dot because the canonical hamilton canonical equation of motion in the new phase space should take this form so this is what i should have and i have this relation between the old and the new phase space and now the both this equation has to be correct it, so if that is to be the same then you can immediately see if you just look at this particular equation and this particular equation from there you can easily make out that omega should be uh, from here you see omega should be these two equations just look at it omega should be equal to m omega m transpose and this is basically the this is the symplectic form this is the symplectic form i talked about earlier when we discussed about symplectic matrix this is the symplectic condition that has to be obeyed uh, you know uh, and in canonical transformations uh, this symplectic condition has to be obeyed uh, because in canonical transformation poisson bracket has to be preserved and the symplectic condition actually ensures that now i hope you uh, got a good amount of idea about symplectic matrix and therefore now it's time to go back to our earlier uh, equation that we have written this commutation relation now let us go back to quantum mechanics again let us uh, discuss this particular commutation relation that i have mentioned and let us work it out we had this 
equation, right? The commutation between xi k xi l is equal to i omega k l. Now, uh, I made this statement that the symplectic condition has to be satisfied if the Poisson bracket has to be uh, preserved for the same reason because in quantum mechanics, Heisenberg uh, uncertainty uh, relation is the it is backbone and if the commutation relation has to be preserved when we uh, do quantum mechanics, then in other words, the symplectic condition actually has to be invoked uh, in the in quantum mechanics regime as well. Okay, so now let us uh, derive this particular commutation relation. Here, this omega matrix is equal to direct sum over omega, small omega, and k is going from 1 to n. This symbol refers to direct sum and this omega is the matrix 0 1 minus 1 0 let me illustrate uh, this for n is equal to 2 so omega for n is equal to 2 would be 0 1 minus 1 0 1 omega direct sum with another omega 0 1 minus 1 0 by direct sum of two matrices we mean say m and n are two matrices and taking direct sum means you will obtain a matrix where the diagonal uh, the block matrices m and n will go to the diagonal of the resultant matrix uh, of the sum and in the rest of the places it would be zero okay that is what I mean by uh, direct sum so here uh, in this case the direct sum will give you the block matrix this one will go as zero one minus one zero and this is will be zero one minus one zero and at the rest of the places you will have zero 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 here so that's what we have now one thing you please note previously uh, while we have discussed classical mechanics uh, context we have discussed about this omega matrix that we have taken if you remember we have taken it as zero uh, it was n by n and here we had i n by n identity matrix here we had i n by n and then we had here zero n by n okay if you recall for n is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 we got there omega the previous one we got it as 0 0 0 0 and here we had 1 0 0 1 and here we had uh, minus 1 0 0 minus 1 0 0 0 0 but here now your omega is equal to for n is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 as you can see already i have written it let me write it again we are having 0 1 minus 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 minus 1 0 this difference is why we are having a different uh, omega here compared to the earlier one in the classical mechanic the reason is very simple because when i am writing this operator xi the ordering of the uh, position and momentum quadrature are as this we are having q1 p1 and then we are having q uh, q2 p2 q2 p2 q2 p2 and so on and this i'm just doing it for um, n is equal to 2 and this is for quantum mechanics case that is how i'm taking upper defining this operator but in the classical case when we have uh, written eta we have written it as q1 q2 p1 p2 
transpose you see the difference here the difference is about the ordering now p1 is coming immediately after q1 and that's the reason we are using this omega here for our uh, to preserve the symplectic form and so on coming back to the commutation relation xi k xi l is equal to i omega k l so let us prove it for the simplest case for n is equal to 1 that's the simplest one let us uh, do it for n is equal to 1 for n is equal to 1 your xi k i can write it as q uh, k p k and xi l is equal to q l p l just two variables q and p for xi k and q and q l p l for xi l so xi k xi l i can it's a commutation so i can write it as xi k xi l minus xi l xi k and xi k i will take it in this form i will have q k uh, p k and this one i will write as in the row form that would be q l p l minus here i'll have q l p l and row q k p k now if i do the multiplication i will get here i will get q k q l q k p l um, p k q l p k p l minus q l p k sorry q k q l q k q l p k p l q k p l p k okay then it's going to give me here i will get zero and uh, this one q k p l q l p k is going to give me i delta k l and here i'll have the ordering is now getting changed so here i'll get minus i delta k l and this one i'll get zero so therefore i can write plus i delta k l zero one minus one zero which is nothing but i can write it as i delta k l plus sum over omega direct sum but only i have here only one right uh, i'm taking n is equal to one i omega k l okay or i can just write it as i omega k l so this i have done it for n is equal to one and this can be easily extended to um, can be extended to extended to any dimension to higher dimension as well and if it is extended to higher dimension i am again going to get this one xi commutation between xi k xi l is equal to i omega k l that's how i have shown you how this commutation relation can be obtained in the context of continuous variable system continuous variable quadrature operators the single mode position and momentum operators satisfy the eigenvalue equation like this where this q and p are real values and the eigen states uh, k q and k p 
are related to each other via Fourier transform. This can be extended to n mode continuous variable system uh, in terms of our usual notation we can write down the eigenvalue equation like this where uh, this j transpose here these j's are uh, eigenvalues now we'll uh, discuss one important quantum states continuous variable quantum states called gaussian states and these are actually of immense importance for continuous variable quantum system and very easy to deal with and these gaussian states are characterized as a state whose wigner function is a gaussian function now i'm not going to discuss uh, about wigner function here but you can consult any standard quantum optics or quantum mechanics book uh, there you will be able to know about wigner function uh, for the rest of our discussion, we don't need uh, to know about Wigner function, so let me not discuss here. Uh, only thing is that in order to you know define a Gaussian state, we just need information about mean and variance only. So a complete characterization of Gaussian states can be made in terms of first and second statistical moments of the field quadrature operators. So we need information about mean and variance only. So by first moment, I mean the mean here and or the expectation value of the operator and you know how to write it in terms of get it express it in terms of trace operation trace of rho xi rho is the density matrix and the second moment uh, is denoted by the 2n by 2n correlation matrix sigma whose elements are defined by this relation as you can see uh, this is uh, a very important uh, relation uh, just to give you a feel about it uh, let me discuss some example a simple example let me give you uh, you know the variance of position for example say x variance of x is defined like this delta x square is equal to x square minus uh, average of x whole square right mean of ever x whole square mean of x square minus mean of x square of the mean of x that's what i mean now instead of 1x let us say we have 2x1 and x2 suppose we have x1 and x2 then if i talk about uh, a, a quantity similar to variance i can write this expression a mean of x1 x2 minus expectation value of x1 into or mean of x1 into mean of x2 right this i can also write as x1 x2 plus x2 x1 divided by 2 minus x1 mean of x1 mean of x2 right so with this what we have done with this we have symmetrized symmetrized x1 x2 so now you can relate it when i write sigma ij i'm writing it as one half xi i xi j plus xi j xi i minus xi i this is the mean of xi i into mean of xi j okay and here for our case in quantum mechanics we are discussing we are having this xi operator is q1 p1 q2 p2 qn pn transpose now let us see how the famous uncertainty relation look like in the language of co correlation matrix or covariance matrix you know 
that the uncertainty principle as per quantum mechanics, every physical state is required to fulfill the uncertainty principle. In fact, every state that satisfies the uncertainty principle is a physical state in quantum mechanics. It is the difference between the second statistical moment and the square of the first moment that constraint a physical state. If you can recall that when we write say variance uh, of delta x or the standard deviation of delta x in the usual uh, uncertainty relation, we mean by this uh, it is the difference between the second statistical moment that is your x square this is the second statistical moment minus square of the first moment that is uh, mean of x square right this is what and this is the constraint uh, you know uncertainty principle says delta x delta px should be greater than or equal to h cross by 2 this is the usual or popular form of the uncertainty relation now the satisfaction, so in fact the satisfaction of uncertainty relation can be exploited to check whether a state is permitted or not. So in fact this can be used or exploited to uh, used as a separable criterion in a similar way the positivity of a density matrix does. Moreover. Uh, one uh, important point to note here is that whether a state is mixed or pure, entangled or separable, it does not depend on the first and the first and the second statistical moment. Rather, it depends on the difference bit in terms of the covariance. So the first moment can be set to zero for convenience without loss of generality. That's this I mean by this is that I can always set j expectation value of j to be equal to zero without loss of any generality. Now let me write down the uncertainty relation for continuous variable system in terms of our new language uh, correlation matrix uncertainty relation for continuous variable system. This uh, is written in this form sigma plus i omega sigma is the correlation matrix omega is the matrix already I it is symplectic matrix that already I discussed earlier. So now you see that guy is appearing here. So this is the uncertainty relation. Let me explain it. Let me uh, give you the proof. Let us take the elements say sigma i j plus i by 2 omega i j okay here in this case should not confuse you this i refers to the imaginary number okay all right this i can now write sigma i j is one half xi uh, i xi j plus xi j xi i minus xi i xi z and then i have i by 2 uh, omega i z right i by 2 omega i z this i can now write as 1 by 2 1 half now recall the uncertainty relation that i have written in terms of this omega xi i xi z is equal to omega i z right i omega i z and this implies i have xi i xi z minus xi z xi i is equal to i omega i z so i can use it here uh, in this expression and then I can write it as twice xi i xi z minus i omega i z minus xi i 
xi j actually product right uh, minus expectation value of xi i expectation value of xi j and then i have plus i by 2 omega i j and uh, this will give me simply xi i xi j right minus xi uh, i xi j now as i said that i can set this mean to be equal to zero for convenience without loss of any generality so therefore i have simply expectation value of xi uh, product of xi i xi j so this gives me that sigma plus i omega by 2 is equal to i can write it the full form in this way this is what i have now expectation value of uh, this quantity is nothing but trace of rho xi square and due to the positivity of the density matrix you can immediately see that this should be uh, greater than or equal to zero this is what the uh, uncertainty relation for continuous variable system now you note that you have to note that trace of rho is equal to zero right and this implies that sum of the this implies that sum of the eigenvalues sum of the eigenvalues of omega capital omega are not positive that's why you are getting the traces coming out to be zero hence what i can conclude it imply further that this covariance matrix or correlation matrix has to be positive its eigenvalue has to be positive so sigma should be greater than greater than zero its eigenvalue has to be always positive now finally let me give you some quick you know construction of covariant matrix some cases uh, let me discuss quickly which may be useful construction of correlation matrix correlation matrices uh, first let me consider the simple case of n is equal to 1 in the case of n is equal to 1 i have xi i is equal to say qp only n is equal to 1 and xi j also i can take it to be qp only right so this implies the elements of the co correlation matrix would be sigma 1 1 would be 1 half q q plus q q is equal to you know that would be simply q square and then sigma 1 2 would be 1 half of q p plus p q and sigma 2 1 would be one half of uh, pq plus qp okay and sigma 2 2 would be equal to one half of pp plus pp and this would be nothing but your p square and therefore i can write the correlation matrix in this form i will have q square and here i will have one half this is the anti commutator qp here also i will have one half anti commutator pq okay and here i have p square let me do it quickly for n is equal to 2 for n is equal to 2 xi i would be q1 p1 q2 p2 transpose and similarly let me take xi uh, let us say 2 
that would be equal to again the same thing let me write q1 p1 q2 p2 all these are operators so all these are operators okay and then you can construct say sigma 1 on would be q1 square sigma 1 2 would be equal to 1 half q1 p1 plus p1 q1 like this so that way you can construct the whole range of say again say sigma 1 3 would be in this case would be 1 half um, q1 q2 plus q2 q1 and so on you can let me write even sigma 1 4 that would be 1 half q1 p2 plus p2 q1 like this so therefore i can now write down the correlation matrix sigma would be of this type so this is the sigma i have written for n is equal to 2 all these are operators in fact this i can this matrix can be structured in blocks so if i just uh, i can write it in terms of blocks and i can express sigma as a here and this is a b and this is c and if, if you see this is the transpose of this particular block now a and b quantifies the variance of mode 1 b quantifies the variance of mode 2 on the other hand c uh, quantifies the correlation between a and b this lecture has become already too long so let me stop here for today in the next lecture i will discuss uh, quantum entanglement measure for continuous variable system in the context of a two mode gaussian system so see you in the next lecture thank you